This is the Mongoose XR Pro, a $349 full suspension mountain bike available at Walmart.com. I don't believe you can buy this bike at Walmart stores, but it's always available on the website. This bike has a loyal cult of fans. There are groups and forums dedicated to owning and modifying the XR Pro. Many people claim that when this bike is upgraded with $500 to $1,000 worth of parts, it can equal a two or $3,000 local bike shop bike. That's a premium bike without a premium price. That's also something that's very hard to pass up. So I bought one to find out if the XR Pro is a great bike or if it's all hype. I have to admit, I was a little apprehensive spending $349 for a bike made by Pacific Cycle. Now Pacific slash Durrell makes most of the cheap bikes you find in the big box stores. But they also make Cannondale, so they can produce a quality product. Being that this bike is only available on the website, we're going to take a detailed look at the components and the build quality and not ride it on this video. So if you're here to watch it be ridden, you need to follow up on another video for that. Now let's get to the bike. Bike's a little heavy. Notice that getting it out of the box. It's also very large. Covered that more in a moment. But it looks great. But you know, most of these Walmart bikes do, so looks can kind of be deceiving. But as far as components, it's not bad. It has beefy handlebars like you would expect on a quality mountain bike, and the Zoom branded stem, at least in appearance, looks to be well made. The Mongoose branded grips, very comfortable, feature a honeycomb design. Next to those are alloy brake lever housings made it up to polished brake levers. I'm personally a fan of Shimano trigger shifters, but these SRAM X4 aren't bad. They function perfectly, and they look good on the bike. Very low profile and out of the way. The head tube's branded with a metal mongoose placard. I had to straighten this up. It was crooked out of the box. The front suspension system, SR Suntour XCT V3 with dual preload adjustments. Now, if you are an SR Suntour hater, Get ready to share this because I'm about to give you an early Christmas present. This bike doesn't have the usual frame sticker you find on a bike from Walmart that tells you not to ride it on trails or off-road. Well, on the back of the front suspension fork, there is a warning label. And this label says, Leisure Cross Country. Do not use for free ride, downhill, dirt jumper, or any hard riding. Here's the shocking part. This label isn't from Walmart and it isn't from Pacific Cycles. It's from SR Suntour, warning you that their 100mm front suspension travel isn't good enough for downhill or mountain biking, that it's only to be used on leisure cross country. On the other side of the SR Suntour, we have a 160mm Pro Max disc brake setup, along with a quick release skewer. Alloy double wall rims made it up to completely generic, no brand name whatsoever, 29 by 2.1 inch tires. The main frame, satin gray finish, and as I mentioned earlier, void of any warning stickers about riding off-road, it does mention that it's heat treated aluminum, and the welds look very good. The top tube features XR Pro branding, but it's partially obscured with a weird squiggle design. Squiggles continue on the down tube, partially obscuring the mongoose branding. The down tube also features cage mounts, as well as a Pacific Cycle sticker. And now to the part that most of us love to hate, and that's these coil over rear suspension systems. Not a big fan of this, but this one is rated at 850 pounds per square inch, which is significantly more than any of the others I've seen. This one is branded K-Speed, Number 258, I looked it up and couldn't find any information about it, but it's easy to hate on these type things when you look at the adjustment screw and the base plate slightly off center. I was expecting alloy pedals with this bike. Instead, we get polymer mongoose branded flat pedals paired up to SR Suntour XCT branded crank arms. It also features an SR Suntour Super Power Flow crank set. This is a Pacific Cycle, so there's no information on the actual gearing but it does look decent. The front derailleur, generic, but it is considerably better made than any of the other Pacific Cycles generic front derailleurs I've seen thus far. A KMC Z72 chain that meets up with an 8-speed 11 to 32 tooth cog set. I've never heard of G Falcon. 
I looked it up and couldn't find any information on them. Maybe if someone knows anything about their products, you can comment in the comments section. Here's a look at the SRAM X4 rear derailleur. The chainstay is basic mongoose branding. The seat stay is void of any branding, but it makes up for that with the stylish looking rear suspension mounts. The rear brake, same as the front, 160mm Pro Max. The rear wheel has a quick release. The saddle is a WTB Speed 5. Looks like a decent saddle. Up front we saw this bike was equipped with a zoom stem. It also has an alloy zoom seat post. 24 speed branding on the top of the seat tube, lower part of the seat tube, powered by SRAM. There is one complaint that a lot of people have with these big box bikes that I think is very warranted and that is there's no frame sizing you kind of get what you get. When you spend $349 for a bike, you don't know the size of it, that can be a problem. In the case of this bike, it's a large bike. I'm 5'10", almost 5'11", and this bike's too big for me. There's no room between my junk and the top bar of this bike. So if you were any smaller than me, I would think that could be a very uncomfortable ride for a lot of people. Overall, I think this may be an okay bike for some people. And by some people, I mean the people that are planning on upgrading this thing. Because for $349, bucks, you do get some decent components, minus the tires and that coilover suspension. But you're going to upgrade those anyway, right? If you're going to join that cult of the XR Pro, those are going to go right out of the gate. If you're not, you're planning on buying this bike to keep it as is, I don't know that I would recommend it. I haven't even ridden it on a trail yet. But $349 bucks is a lot to spend on a big box bike that you're not going to get that bike shop support on. So, for the cult of the XR Pro, I kind of see where you guys are coming from, yet I kind of have a few reservations. I don't know. I'll get this thing out on the trail and make my own determinations. Who knows? I may join the cult and start buying parts. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.